Today's video is going to cover the common source JFIT amplifier and we'll talk about some of the characteristics that they have and if you watch the video on the common emitter amplifier you're going to recognize that the the characteristics of the JFET common source are, are very much like the like that one with the exception that there's really uh, no current on the gate which makes this uh, this configuration really effective in uh, saving power and it's also excellent at uh, impedance matching because that reverse bias gate has a very high input impedance and the output impedance can be matched with resistors pretty easily. So how exactly does a JFET do its magic and amplify a, a small signal? Well let's go back to transistors for just a moment, specifically the common emitter and you'll recall that there was an emitter resistance uh, on, on any forward biased uh, transistor there was always an emitter uh, base junction resistance either called R prime E or R E J and the emitter resistor which would have been here was completely bypassed as it is here so that's the only resistance that's on the input side on the output side on the collector side we had a a resistance RC and that was whatever was on the collector resistor and the load and to get the voltage gain was uh, a simple matter of taking RC and dividing it by whatever resistances we had on the input side in this case RE and then we just take that AV and multiply it by our input signal. The the JFET isn't that much different except it is you it uses transconductance in lieu of resistance. And when we're dealing with transconductance all you have to remember is that when you have a value of GM it's it's nothing more than 1 over R. So you might have already guessed that to get the voltage gain of a circuit like this, instead of dividing by uh, the resistance, we just multiply by the transconductance value. So we end up with GM times whatever resistance we have over here on the on the drain. And let's say that we have a known value, and we'll call it 5 volts at the gate. And it's going to be negative 5 volts. And if you remember, this is our, our typical drain curve. So we'll put minus 5 roughly at this point. And now we'll add an AC signal to our 5 volts. And let's say that it goes up. 1 volt peak and it goes down 1 volt peak so we're going to go to uh, on the plus side we're going to go down to minus 4 volts and on the negative side we're going to go down to minus 6 volts so you can see that on on the positive side we're going to be moving in this direction and the negative side we're moving in this direction so what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a drink uh, a point or Q point and we're going to be moving up and down this curve to change the drain current that's over here. Well, dra changing the drain current and changing the voltage gate to source changes the GM. So what we try to do is operate it on a relatively small area because this curve is nonlinear. So we operate it on a very uh, narrow portion of the, of the wave, let's say from here to here, to try to main, uh, maintain the linearity and we get a, a fairly constant value for GM and that can be, uh, let's say it's, it's 2,000 micro siemens or such, such number. Alright, so it's micro siemens or micro moles I should write, but you know, we'll remember it's micro siemens and let's say that this is a uh, 1,000 ohms. Well, here's our our input side, 2,000 micro siemens and our output side, 1,000 ohms. Again, if we go back to transistors, which for some people are, are just a little bit easier to analogize uh, or to conceptualize, that 2,000 micro siemens translates to about 500 ohms. We just take the reciprocal of that and uh, that'll give us the, the resistance. 
Well, if we go back to uh, transistors, remember it's just going to be RD divided by this, so we're looking for a gain of 2. The output resistance divided by the input resistance. Or just as easily, and this is the proper way to do it, take that uh, 2000 microsiemens and multiply it by our resistance at the output, or 1K, and we'll end up with the same thing, a value of two, so that's the overall gain. So all we're doing is we're taking a resistance between a, a specific point, and it is gonna vary slightly, but we're trying to minimize that variation so we can get a nice constant value, and multiply the two uh, values together, and there's your output. So it's a, it's a relatively, you know, it's a, it's a very simple device. One of the characteristics of a, a JFET is that its gain tends to be very low compared to its transistor counterpart. But it does work effectively, and again, its big, uh, its big plus is that there's no, practically no gate current at this point. Uh, so there's a, a huge current gain, even if we only have a small voltage gain, if we're using practically zero current at this point, and, and just getting, you know, microamps here, it's still, it's still a big plus. Here are the, the calculations that we're going to look through, go through to actually characterize the device and come up with a, with a voltage gain for the, for the circuit. Well, the first thing we need to do is find out what the voltage is going to be on the gate of the JFET. And that's just uh, VDD. And we're interested in the voltage on RG2 because that's uh, parallel. So we're going to take VDD, multiply it by uh, RG2 divided by RG1 plus RG2. Again, it's a voltage divider. And in this circuit, we're going to get 5.066, so we'll just call it 5.07 volts on the gate. Knowing that, we can also find, if we're going to use a uh, graphical approach to finding what the actual curve is, if we know what the, the JFET has done, we've characterized it, we can find the two coordinates by finding what VGS is with zero uh, drain current. Well, VGS with zero drain current would be uh, no resistance, so we're looking at 5.07 volts for one point and zero milliamps. The other point would be what's the drain current going to be with zero at VGS? Well, with zero at VGS, we have now, all we have to do is take the 5.07 and divide it by the resistor, 4.3K, and we end up with a current of 1.18 milliamps. And this is probably going to be a little bit clearer when I show it to you on, on the graph. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll come back to this page. All right, so here's here's our graph, and here's the uh, the four transistors J fits that I that I characterized early, and I'm still using them in these experiments. And we wanted to find out what we're going to have on the the gate voltage gate to source with with two points to get a a line where we're going to be able to extend it through our our drawing and find the Q point. With 5.07 volts on, on this point, and that's from gate to source, if there is zero current going through, through the device at this point, zero milliamps, we are still going to have 5.07 as, as a coordinate point. So it's 5.07 volts gate to source and zero milliamps. On the other hand, what happens if we treat this as, okay, all 5.07 volts is 5.07 volts is going through this device. Uh, in other words, we have 5.07 volts on the resistor, but now we have zero voltage at, at that stage. And it's just a, a division problem, so now we have 5.07 zero seven volts divided by the 4.3 K and that gives us the 1.18 milliamps so roughly roughly right there and what we can do is extend our line 
from one intersect through the other and our Q point then is going to be somewhere along those four transistors in in this range and if we go to a slightly magnified image of this section and the values that we just computed are going to vary from 5.07 so approximately this point and up to 1.18 so roughly at that point and if we connect the dots we get a intersection of the line with the possible curves from our characterized device. So we're using the the we'll be using the red uh, JFET, uh, the red line, and so our Q point is going to be roughly at this value, and so we're looking at about. Uh, two volts for on VGS so when we actually run the circuit we should have a minus two volts from gate to source approximately and we can have the current varying with the voltage and remember the voltage uh, well I ha haven't told you yet the the voltage is going to vary uh, it's going to be one volt peak to peak so it's going to vary half a volt above this uh, two volt VGS and half a volt below so with a 2 volt gate to source we're going to be varying from this point to this point. And if we draw some lines on there to make the visualization a little bit easier, we're going to have a line here and here. And next thing we're going to look at is, well, what's the current value that's going to be changing it between those two well the current if we go through there and we follow the until we get to the intersection of the red line we have one point here and our second point is here so our current is going to vary between these two points. So that is our our delta ID. And from between this green line and this green line, that's going to be our delta voltage gate to source. With that, we can find the GM value, and remember that's going to be the delta in the drain current divided by the delta in the voltage gate to source. And with these numbers, we're going to be 1 volt for our drain to source variation. And our current is varying from approximately 600 millivolts or our 600 milliamps or 600 microamps and all the way to 3. Point, well, it looks like it's about 3.25 or 3.2 milliamps so there's our variation and if we plug these in we're looking at a variation of about 2.6 uh, milliamps divided by one volt so our transconductance is going to be 2600 micro siemens or thereabout so we have 5.07 volts gate to source once again and VGS with zero ID is just going to be whatever the value of VGS is uh, no no current and the other value would be the drain current with zero VGS and for this one all we have to do is take the voltage gate to source and divide it by whatever resistance we have on the drain and that will give us that that ID value. With that in mind recall in our circuit we had a drain variation of 2.6 
milliamps and our change in the voltage gate to source was only one volt so it's nice easy numbers so we're looking at 2600 uh, micro Mohs and I'm going to stick with Mohs because if I start putting micro Siemens we th might start thinking it's microseconds so let's uh, remember this one for so as micro Mohs so 2600 micro Mohs and we can also have used the data sheet and we could use the extremes on the data sheet to get the entire variation of what the transconductance would be and and the data sheet specifically says that the maximum transconductance and, and we're going to be using again an MPF 102 so the transconductance can be anywhere from from 2000 uh, micro moles all the way up to 7500 Micromoles. So if we plug these values into our circuit and we make the assumption that our VGS is going to be 2 volts, we can come up with a, an extreme for the gain that we would have in this circuit. Well, the gain in this circuit is going to be GM, the transconductance, times RD. So let's, let's plug the values in for a into into this equation to find out what the maximums are going to be and I'll go ahead and erase this and we'll just uh, stick that into our, our memory and remember that's what we're going to be working with on the experiment so we have a GMO of, and let's use the upper value first so we have 7500 micro and we're going to take one and subtract VGS so we decided we're going to try for two volts and VGS off for this device on maximum on the data sheet is is 8 volts and plugging all of that in I'm going to get a transconductance of 3166 micro moles I'm just going to put micro M on there well, no, I better not and if I do the other extremes we can have a, a minimum of 2000 micro moles and we're still trying for the the two volts and let's say that we now we have three and a half volts for our our transconduct or our voltage gate to source which is the lower end of of the or it's the upper voltage that I actually had for the devices that I had tested and we're going to end up with a transconductance of about 857 micro moles. Well you can see that if I plug these values into this equation the, vo the voltage gains are going to be very very different and the idea is to you know we're, usually when you're working with a circuit you want to get those gains to be fairly constant. So we know the transconductance with the two extremes we still need to find the value of RD so this is an AC value and the AC signal is going to split at this point so as far as any AC is concerned these two values are are going to be in parallel and these two values in parallel come out to be about 1.61 K ohms and plugging our transconductance values for those two extremes into the circuit uh, using our VGS uh, of 2 volts we had 3166 micro times the 1.61 K as one value and the other one was the 857 times the 1.61 or 1.61 K and with this upper value we can get a gain as high as 9 and with this lower value we can get a gain as low as 1.37 so this is just illustrative of, of the big variations you can get in the JFETs and there are ways to to minimize this this big drift by eliminating some of the variation we're going to that we see in this and I'm going to show you that shortly so with all of this in mind uh, again we know that we're going to have a variation anywhere from uh, 1.37 in the gain all the way up to 
to 9. But if we use the transconductance values that we had from our graphical approach, we can get value the uh, a pretty close value of what we should get. So we had 2600 microsiemens or micromoles and we still have the same one point six one k ohms which will give us a gain of of about four point point two so with a one volt peak to peak signal coming into the circuit at at this point we should have roughly four point two volts peak to peak coming out now the current going into this is going to be extremely extremely small remember this is a reverse bias junction and the the current that's going through is, is probably on the order of a couple of nanoamps and with two volts and a few nanoamps we're actually in the gig ohms for for any resistance at this point but there are these two biasing resistors of 5.1 meg and uh, 10 meg and this is going to give us the, a combined value which we, which we could call RG or lowercase g and you can see that it's still going to be in in the meg ohms when you use a, a JFET it's a it's almost a must you want to really keep these resistors high if you, if you make this you know 5.1k and this one 10 meg you've you've uh, just taken away the biggest advantage that a JFET has in that it is a uh, it's it's a it's a current sipping device it doesn't draw a lot of current low resistors though are going to cause the current to be drawn off through the uh, through RG1 and RG2 okay so we know that there's very little current that's going to be actually used by the the JFET but we're going to have a 4.2 volt uh, going through 15k now, this is only a few hundred microamps but remember we're talking nanoamps to microamps so the current gain on on this device is is huge so the AI is 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 really it's very large and that you're going to find this is true of, of generally all the configurations of, of JFETs all right, we just also we also just plugged in our numbers to get a, a a voltage gain, and we found out that AV is it's present. We'll just give it a check mark. Now, in a transistor circuit where we were dealing with R prime E, and that was usually on the, always less than a hundred ohms because of uh, the currents that run through it. That hundred ohms going into one. Uh, 61 or 1.61 K would have given us a, a huge huge gain of at least 16 in, in probably the worst case and up to uh, 150 200 times in, in, in the best case with, with distortion of course so although the JFET is a great device as a as a current sipper as a voltage amplifier it, it isn't as good as the transistor but the JFET again is a is a uh, it's used because it uses very little energy and although I haven't covered it there is a a mathematical method to finding what the the drain current is going to be uh, given a, a known value for VGS off and, and IDRS but notice now we have ID on both sides of this equation so guess what you have to do a uh, you have to set it up as a quadratic and if you want to just you know, get a calculator and do it that way uh, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, all of that and, and, and you know you can do that on your own if you're if you're interested in it so earlier I mentioned there was a way to kind of eliminate the big variations we can have in the transconductance and if you remember the common emitter we started using the swamping resistors to to give a little bit of a, of a negative feedback and this is the same thing we're going to do with our JFET. We're going to set up, we're going to take the what originally was one large 4.3K ohm resistor. And I didn't have two specific values. Uh, that would give me exactly the 4.3. So I had to use these two. So I'm only 10 ohms off. So I'm, I'm pretty content with that. So the sum of these two is still 4.3K ohms. And... But now we have a bypassed value on the 3.9K resistor. So we're using this 390 to actually swamp some of the variations in the transconductance out that we can have here. 
Ideally, we'd like to get this value uh, to be larger than whatever the transconductance would be so that we can swamp it effectively. But if you make this too large, you're starting to eliminate the voltage gain in, in the circuit. The way the gain is calculated in here, we still have the, the same transconductance value that we dealt with before. So if we're using our uh, our, our graphical analysis, we know that we had uh, 1 over 2600 microsiemens or micromoles. And we're going to add the value of RS1. So we're looking at this as a, it's the AC path and it's going to follow through the device in this direction. So we have to go through RS1 plus we have to go through the transconductance. And then we divide that into whatever the, the total resistance is on our drain. Now this shouldn't be, hopefully it's not too confusing because you can always look at this. Remember, 1 divided by 2600 micromoles is going to give you a resistance. So what we're doing is we're actually converting this transconductance value back into its resistive value. And now we have a voltage divider where we're going to take the resistance on the JFET plus the resistance of the source resistor. Uh, that's our input side down here, or actually it's going through the entire device, uh, and dividing that into our output side, which is the two drain resistors here. So, once again, you're just thinking of this as, as a resistor, and that's why we're, we're taking the inverse of the conductance. And plugging those values in, and we know that our RD was that 1.61K. And that RS So again, plug the values in. We have 1.61K for RD. And we're going to divide that by the sum of our transconductance. Plus our value for the drain resistance or the source resistance, which is 390 ohms. And again, the bigger you can make this, the smaller uh, the voltage divider effect will be with uh, when we include the, the conductance here. And with these values, we should get a gain of...
2.07. And again with one volt peak to peak coming in, the AV is 2.07, so AV times the V in gives us a V out. And we have 2.07 times 1, so our V out is 2.07 volts. So the next thing I'm going to do is go through the experiment uh, and, and build these circuits and then run them and, and change out the, the JFETs with uh, some of the other ones that I had worked with and we, we'll see how how the stability improves with with this circuit. It's not going to be very substantial because the gains are so low and the oscope probably can't see them but you'll see that uh, by and large the, the gains are going to stay fairly constant when we start using the the swamping resistance versus the the true common source which is going to be you know entirely bypass. Remember a, a true common source and a, and a true common emitter the entire emitter resistance is bypassed by the capacitor. If we start using this swamping resistor at this point, it's no longer a true common source because now we have a voltage drop here and the, the, the source is no longer at AC ground. So let's go ahead and test it and see what we come up with. Here's the test circuit. So there's my voltage divider for the gate of the JFET. So here's the gate. And my drain is connected to the 1.8 K ohm resistor. And that jumps to the output uh, through this capacitor to remove the DC from the actual load resistor. And my source is the 4.3 K resistor and currently I'm bypassing the entire resistance for AC with this capacitor. And after testing this one, we're going to hook it up to the bypassed uh, resistor. The swamping resistor will be this 390 ohm or this 3.9K and 390 ohm in, in series. And then we'll see the, what the gains are going to be and, what the, and how we can get some pretty good stability out of this voltage divider by a circuit. Here are my starting parameters. I'm working with a 1 kHz input signal at 1 volt peak to peak. And I have a DC voltage applied of 15 volts. And right now everything is, uh, is turned off, so we'll turn our, our signal back on and take a look at it on the, on the scope. Here are the input signal in, in yellow and that's approximately one volt uh, peak to peak and the blue trace is the output and we're looking at about 4.2 volts and we calculated a, a gain of 4.19 so that's pretty much on the mark and what I what should happen if I change out the the JFETs the variation there's there is going to be a variation in the amplitude of this output because of the transconductance variations but it should be it should be fairly insubstantial and i'm going to do something that you probably shouldn't i'm going to go in and actually hot swap the components so i'm going to put uh, this little guy in next and here goes the signal and here goes the new jfet and we'll give it a a minute or so to actually stabilize temperature wise and then uh, get the next value and it's about as stable as it's going to get it hasn't changed in a while so exactly on on the money again and swap it out with one more and give that one a moment to to settle in and it looks like the gain for this one's going to be slightly lower, but still it's 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 very close to the to the four. And there we have. So this one has a gain of 3.7, and it, it's a, it's a, a little bit lower, but but well within the spec. So you can see we had really a really pretty good stability. The biggest variation we had in gain was uh, less than than 0.3 times. So now let's go ahead and hook up the swapped or the swamped JFET and see if that makes any difference in the variations between the gains. And here I've hooked up my 
390, my 3.9K, I'm bypassing the 3.9K, so I'm using this as a swamping resistor, and you can see I've hooked it up to the device here. So we can expect a decrease in the overall voltage gain to 2.07. So let's take a look at uh, what we actually get. And here's our first JFET. And again, the calculation was 2.07 volts out for the gain. And we're right at, we're just under, under 2 volts. So let's go ahead and swap out that component again with another device. And this one has a gain of, uh, looks like 2.16. And the last one has a gain of, of 2.12. So the variation in gain now decreased down to a mere 0.16 difference between the highest and the lowest. So we had gain anywhere from 2 to uh, 2.16 and in the other circuit our gain variation was anywhere from 3.8 to about 4.2 uh, so definitely worked uh, for swamping but the trade-off was that the gain went way down because we now have that in resistor included I'd also like to check the gate to source voltage to see if it matches up with what we expect from our, our drain curve and we were looking at our characterized JFETs and determined that we should have a gate to source voltage of approximately minus 2 volts and we still have the 15 volts hooked up to the to VDD and if I measure between the the drain or the source and the gate you can see that I have almost exactly uh, minus two volts so we once again had a have a good value so our DC values are, are, are going to be in shape, good shape let's see what our drain to source voltage was, is going to be and looks like drain to source is uh, negative or it's 4.8 I'm not following polarity and I, and I probably should and so there we go 4.8 volts from drain to source and if we take our current through the, the two JFETs or the two uh, resistors RD and RS multiply the currents uh, those resistors by the values of the currents and subtract that from VDD or VD yes from VDD we should get uh, about this value and to summarize, you can see that in a swamp JFET, we have more stability in the gain, but we have a loss in the gain. Now, if we compare the common source to the common emitter transistor, you'll note that both of them had a voltage gain. Uh, both of them have current gains, although the, the JFET will have a much larger current gain as a, as a proportion or as a ratio. However, its voltage gain tends to be lower. And one thing that I haven't mentioned and that you can still see on the scope is that there is the typical phase shift we find in a common emitter, common source circuit. The input and the output are 180 degree phase shifted. So the next video is going to be on the common drain amplifier. And again, if you do have any comments, you can email theoffsetvolt at gmail.com.